Hello everyone, welcome back to Building Games on AWS. In this series, we'll discuss various security topics as it applies to game development. My name is Tran, and here with me today is Connor to discuss threat modeling. Yeah, thanks Tran. Hey, I'm Connor Walsh, an application security engineer at Amazon Web Services. I'll just give a bit of background on myself. I've been working for over a decade now in different aspects of you know network and application security across a variety of different industries. Uh, with some of my more formative and probably favorite years having been spent at a AAA game developer, helping to secure their games and architecture uh, to help delight their players all across the world. So my current role at AWS focuses on uh, helping and enabling the, the engineering teams that build, support, and maintain uh, all the different services and subsidiaries uh, in, in holding up our end of the shared responsibility model and uh, to help keep that high bar of security that AWS is known for. We've heard that everything begins with a threat model. Can you tell us a little bit more about what a threat model is and how it could be used? Yeah, so threat modeling, it's a you know, essentially a conceptual process used to secure uh, a system, just about any system, doesn't have to be software. Uh, when it is software, it usually implies, you know, pulling in things like an architecture and data flow diagrams, uh, you know, looking at the dependencies, the way things are built, you know, all things like that. Um, to pull a quote from Wik Wikipedia, threat modeling is a systemic approach to identifying, prioritizing, and mitigating threats. Uh, to put it simply, think up all the bad things that could happen to a system, figure out which of these are most important, uh, and then figure out how to handle all of those. Okay, so let's say I want to threat model how I would approach playing the next biggest game, uh, say Lost Ark, for example. Would that be possible? Hey, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this is a threat model that we're building from the perspective of the player as opposed to the perspective of the developer, which is probably what we're going to be focusing on mostly for the rest of this talk. But, uh, you know, we can look at the player, so let's jump right in. So what does it look like when you're actually getting onto a game of Lost Ark? Um, well, so it probably looks something like this. You go launch up the game client, and the game client's going to provide your credentials to the Lost Ark game server to be able to identify you. Uh, these credentials are probably going to be coming from something like Steam. Those are tied to your username and password. And again, they're going to identify you to the backend server who you are as a player. And also whether you have a license to play this game. Uh, for the record, uh, Lost Ark is free to play, so everyone can get a license. Go get one. It's a fun game. But now that you're authenticated and you know uh, allowed to play the game, uh, you, you're going to be able to go pick a game server to jump on, choose your character, load up and start playing the game and interacting with other players. So that's what the system looks like. But, uh, you know, what are some of the threats there? Well, we talked about those credentials, again, that username and password to use the login um, and identify you as a player. But it also identifies, you know, those licenses that you have to the game, as well as the contents of your player accounts, so like the items in your inventory, skins that you may have purchased, things like that. If someone steals your credentials, username and password, they're going to be able to log in and own your account, potentially steal things, you know, stuff you don't want to happen. How do we mitigate this? Well, don't give people your password. You should never give anyone your password, especially if someone's claiming to be Amazon Game Studios and asking for your password, because I promise you, they never will. They don't need it. So don't give anyone your password. Another threat is, uh, you know, we're talking about an online multiplayer game. So you you need a live internet connection to be able to connect and play with those other players. Now, if you lose that internet connection, you can't play. You might lose that internet connection by say, you know, kicking the network cable out of the wall, or maybe you forgot to pay your internet bill and the company shuts you off. And, uh, but how do you mitigate those? Well, maybe you buy a nicer network cable uh, or jump on the Wi-Fi if you wanna deal with latency. And uh, make sure to pay your internet bill. You know, some of those things will help mitigate your uh, problem in getting disconnected from the game. 
So yeah, those are just two example threats, um, you know, within this this threat model and some of those mitigations that we could, uh, you know, we could apply. You say that it's a systematic approach. Do you have any examples that we could follow as opposed to just listing out all the threats? Yeah, coming up with a list of threats from scratch is definitely like a daunting task. You need to have some tools and mechanisms to help guide you along the way. And that's where we pull in frameworks. Um, and there's a number of, of popular ones out there. You may have heard of one called OWASP, uh, the OWASP Top 10. So OWASP stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. And the OWASP Top 10, or the OWASP Top 10 Web Application Security Risks, is a constantly updated list of the most common and critical vulnerabilities found across web applications at, at that time. You know, they come out with one every few years. Uh, there's some other frameworks that are, you know, a bit more ambiguous and higher level. Um, things like Stride, Dread, and Pasta uh, are three examples of different acronyms uh, that build out the frameworks of different areas to focus on in an application uh, when it comes to building out that threat model. Uh, Stride is probably one of the most popular ones out there. Um, so we'll double click on that and uh, use some examples from our Lost Ark situation earlier. So yeah, that's Stride. So S-T-R-I-D-E. The S stands for spoofing. Spoofing is when someone manipulates data to, to, to confuse the, uh, the identity of that person. Uh, so this is like if you're going to change data that you're exchanging with the Lost Ark game server to have it confuse your player with a different player, you know, potentially accessing their inventory, you know, something like that. You can mitigate these kinds of threats um, by strongly enforcing identity uh, when it comes to any of these uh, data communications that you're having with the end player. Uh, you know, some ways, uh, there are some specific AWS services that can help with this. These are things like IAM, or identity and access management, or Cognito, to identify your users. So the T in Stride stands for tampering. And this is when one is able to modify d the data within a system. And this is usually in a, a harmful way and often in, in, through a method that you're not supposed to be able to. Uh, tampering for something in Lost Ark would be, let's say we're storing uh, a player's inventory in, in a DynamoDB table somewhere. And somehow another player figures out a way to write to that table and they're able to modify the IDs in their inventory or uh, the IDs of those items, I should say. And the maybe the amount, so they're able to change what item is actually in their inventory and maybe increase or decrease the amount of that item. Um, the ways to enforce of this is, you know, you need to enumerate all the different ways that this data can be updated and make sure that all of those are locked down and only authorize users who are actually allowed to perform those actions. R stands for repudiation. Repudiation is when you are unable to accurately tell who performed what action. Uh, one example is, let's say in Lost Ark, for whatever reason, they weren't logging the transactions that a player would have against, you know, the in-game merchants or NPCs. This would mean that there was currency leaving the player's account and items coming into the account that didn't have an audit trail. And so really we would not be able to identify where this item came from. Uh, if hackers started getting getting into duping or duplicating these items nefariously, there would be no real way to tell if this item came from a dupe or it came from a transaction. We would mitigate this issue by you know logging these transactions and probably logging you know all player actions or you know if that's too much, maybe at least identifying all of the actions that are very important to the game and making sure to log all of those and who performed them. Uh, you know this would also be referred to as observability. Now D stands for denial of service. 
And denial of service is whenever a uh, system or process is taken into a state where it's no longer accessible to its end users or consumers. Uh, so, you know, if an attacker sends a large amount of network traffic to a game server or even a player and takes that their, their connection to the Internet offline, now that player or game server is no longer allowed to interact with the rest of the, you know, the rest of the users in the system and therefore the game can't get played. Um, and that's why, again, we call it a denial of service. Um, you may have heard the term DDoS, which is distributed denial of service. And, you know, that's another attack that leverages, you know, a large amount of sources or systems or computers to send a crazy amount of traffic that just overloads uh, the target and, again, takes them offline. Uh, the mitigations here are to use, you know, denial of service or DDoS protection. Um, AWS services that take care of this are Shield and Shield Advanced. And finally, we get to E, which stands for Elevation of Privilege. Elevation of Privilege is when a user is able to perform actions at a higher level of authority than their account is entitled to. Say, a player being able to access administrator functionality and able to ban other players uh, which you know they shouldn't be able to maybe report them but you shouldn't be able to hit the ban hammer button so how do we mitigate this well this is from secure design and making sure that only players with the correct level of authority are actually able to make you know calls against those endpoints uh, you know one thing to question is do players ever need to make calls against a ban you know API endpoint no probably not so maybe we shouldn't even allow them to authenticate or call it in the first place uh, but again it all just comes down to design and so with e we've now spelt out stride s t r i d e um, and again, this uh, is just one example of a framework that can be used to build out a threat model, you know, for an application system, etc. Um, there's a number of others, and you don't actually have to use one that you know it's already pre-built. Uh, most of the uh, of the places that I've worked with in the past uh, have built their own because you know who's going to know better what the true threats are to any organization than the organization itself.